Hello, Eric Giboy, EricGiboy.com, and today I'm going to speak to you about something really special. I don't know if you saw a few months ago, a year ago, I'm not sure, when I presented my Hasselblad 503 CW, and I explained that you could have a digital back here, and uh, you could uh, use it differently, and that Hasselblad had created a new camera that you can use a digital back or use this lens, well, combine all this, okay. Well, thanks to one of my uh, subscribers of to my uh, YouTube channel, who uh, didn't give it to me, but lends it to me, so I can present you this 907X, which is this small little body with this digital back, so you can use it uh, on its own like this, or combining uh, the back with my uh, 503 CW. So this is what we're going to look at today. Let's start. Well, I've got the camera just for a few hours so I cannot do a really in-depth test I'm just going to speak about my feeling I obviously I show you some pictures I made with this one and also combining with the uh, 503 okay and I'll show you them I'll, at the end I'll show you more pictures okay but uh, I wanted to test it anyway to f to see how it feels uh, when you have it like this and honestly this is a great little camera a little that's not light. I mean, this without the lens is uh, about uh, 700 grams. So it is not as heavy as my uh, 503, okay? But it's not light, it'd be small. It's really, really cute. I would say really nice to have, okay? So I'm going to, uh, so first, um, before uh, sw uh, switching on, I'll show you one thing. This is actually the lens, the body, and here I've got the bag, the digital bag, okay? So I'm going to open it quickly. This is, the 507 with the lens, and this is actually the digital back, okay? I close it immediately so we don't get dust in there, okay? And this is actually this bag that I can put on my uh, 503, okay? So, uh, as you can see, this is really thin. And this is completely digital. Here, we've got the screen. The screen, you can actually uh, lift, it, lift it. You can put it this way or this way, so you can actually shoot at waist level, okay? And here, you have a small connector here for USB, a small door for USB, so you can actually uh, shoot tethered or you can charge a battery here. The subscribers who lent me uh, the camera as a separate charger. Here underneath you actually have several connectors here uh, for uh, a microphone uh, because you can actually record video with this. So microphone, uh, uh, headphone and flash connectors, okay, if you want to connect with flashes directly. And here you have uh, for remote control, it also has a remote control, okay? And here on the other side, I pull the door here. And here I've got a double SD card, UHS-2. And here, if I pull, I get the battery out. This version, the CFV-52, this is the name of the back, is better, in my opinion, design-wise, because before the other one had the battery underneath like this. It was a pity because design was really nice, because the battery was underneath. By the way, I'm in a hotel in Madrid because I came here to uh, teach uh, photography to, to a client, okay? So uh, this, this is why you hear the, the sound of the police in the street, all this, okay? So this is why you see a different look as uh, usual. I'm in a hotel, okay? So here's the battery. Okay, so let's switch on the camera. And the first thing you're going to notice is that it takes time, okay? Okay, it takes time. It's not, it's not a fast camera right here. Oh yeah, 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 okay. And uh, the screen is completely uh, touchable. Actually, it's easy to use, intuitive. Yeah, like I won't change the ISO, I click here, okay? And here I change the ISO this way, okay? Easy. I want to uh, pick where I want to focus. Okay, I can because this is also autofocus. Uh, this is not 100% uh, manual. Autofocus, obviously, if you use this XCD uh, lenses. If you use uh, my old lenses with an adapter, the adapter, obviously, this is manual uh, focusing. Okay, so here it is. So I'm here. Uh, sorry, I click here. Okay, and here, if I click on menu, here I can. Same thing. I want to change speed. I can change speed here if I want. Okay. If I want to change aperture, I can change here if I want. But in this case, I can also also change on this small button here. If I turn the wheel here, as you can see, the aperture is changing. And if I touch this small button here, that is here, okay. If I turn, it changes speeds, okay. So uh, it's really intuitive. 
this is not a fast camera but uh, I would say it's easy to use okay so what I like about the screen it's really uh, really nice okay but it is slow to use okay this bit it reminds me of the film cameras it is slow and not as slow obviously because you have the autofocus that may help all this but takes your time this is not the camera you use to rush okay so but as you can see I'm not getting into all the details because there, there, there's a lot of uh, uh, things to be done okay but uh, this is this screen can manage the whole camera and this is fantastic okay so now I'm going to view to, to give you some uh, specs before uh, putting the back on my 503 okay so uh, the small body is called 907x and then the, the, the digital back is CFV 50 Two, okay 50 mark 2 okay and this is a medium format sensor this is 43.8 millimeter by 32.9 millimeters so it is actually a smaller uh, medium format than the original 6x6 of the farmer's Surrey by Hasselblad okay but uh, this is uh, smaller but this is exactly the same sensor you can find in the Hasselblad X1D but also in the Fujifilm GFX 50 and 50 uh, S2 and well all the and the 50R okay it's the same sensor but there's a big difference uh, in Fujifilm they work on it in 14 bits and here they work with it in 16 bits okay well uh, I'm not going to be comparing with Fujifilm but as there are many reviews of the Fujifilm I did myself uh, I think it was logical to mention some bit of some, some differences okay the ISO goes from 100 up to 25,600 ISO. As you saw, you have double SD card. And there is something that is really, uh, really made uh, Hasselblad pretty famous. This is a, the color system called Hasselblad Natural Colors. And it's true that Hasselblad colors are incredible. Okay? You have touchable screen, as you've seen, 3.2 inches. And obviously, use it like a live view in live view okay because there's no uh, external uh, viewfinder I actually you can use an optional viewfinder but the, here I don't have it okay and it's USB 3 audio in audio out Wi-Fi and actually you can manage completely the camera with Wi-Fi from an iPad or an iPhone uh, as far as I know it's not for Android just uh, iOS okay and if we speak about the speed it goes from 68 minutes up to one two thousandths of a second so that, that's really surprising me uh, that uh, it goes 68 minutes strange number okay but up to one uh, two thousandths of a second and something that is really important uh, this speed you reach it only with these lenses because you could actually use my old Hasselblad lenses with an adapter but in this case the speed would not be as high because actually uh, the shutter is in the lens this is a leaf shutter it means if I'm going to uh, synchronize flashes it they will synchronize at every speed up to one two thousandths of a second obviously if i put my older lenses that have a top of uh, five hundredth of a second uh, well i cannot uh, synchronize as high obviously okay and what's uh interesting is that it's actually uh you have autofocus in there so it's a big difference now i'm going to place it on my 503 and see how it looks okay what is really stunning and really nice is the way it integrates with uh, the old stuff and the new new stuff okay if you compare with my, the the film back that is here if you compare the look is so similar but well, obviously you have a screen here but you well uh, uh, the, the way it, it, it mixes it uh, fusion with the, the the original or the old version i think is fantastic so we're going to switch it on see how it works so obviously here on the screen you cannot see anything because the uh, mirror is up okay I have to uh, rewind normally I've got my viewfinder here I can't see anything because mirror is here okay obviously I can uh, remove the screen if I want okay I'm going to focus uh, in front in the bedroom okay what's in there I made a picture okay and as you can see picture is here okay okay so far so good so as you can see you can use it classic I don't have any information from here to there, but it does grab, okay? No problem, I get the picture. I'll show you some better picture after, okay? So, as you can see, I'm using this camera with this digital back, the same as if it was a fully film camera. Instead of having the film back, I've got the digital back. But the feeling is exactly as if I was uh, with film, okay? Actually, uh, um, so I make a picture, okay? I have to uh, select my aperture, my speed, all this, focus. I'm going to make a picture on the pillow here, on the bed in the hotel, okay, in the bedroom. 
Okay, the hotel room. Okay. I make my picture. I got it here. Okay. But really, uh, I should have metered with my uh, light meter, all this. But the sensation, the feeling is really that I'm really like using a film back I mean, instead of getting to film gets uh, to digital well what i'm going to say now i may be wrong okay uh i didn't have time to study enough this back okay but there is a live view option but i understand this is not when you have it on this body this is one actually if i mount this lens with an adapter on the 907 uh, x body then i can actually uh, put this in more in bulb mode and I can have uh, so uh, and uh, open uh, click to open the lens, okay. Uh, I think it's the way it works, okay. And uh, then I can have live view with the electronic shutter. I think it's this way it works, okay. I am not sure, okay. Right now, I've used it as if it was a film camera with the digital back, but really the film part or the, the, the measure, the way of measuring light or aperture of this, I really used it thinking it was an analog uh, camera the only thing here i indicated the iso i wanted but all the rest the speed all this is fixed here so as you can see you can really have uh two cameras in one you have uh, uh this with the, the the 907 with the digital bag this is a full shot with the lens this is a 45 millimeter by the way and here this is uh, uh this combo with digital bag okay but this is great. So let's see the pros and cons. Well, first, a big pro. Uh, I think this uh, camera is small for being medium format. It is the smallest medium format, they say. This is really small. It's not light, okay? It's, uh, it weighs, like, I think it's uh, 740 grams with that lens, okay? So it's not light, but the feeling in your hand is very similar to the original, original Hasselblad, uh, the 500, but uh, it's even smaller, okay? So it's shorter okay so i think this is a great uh, sensation okay the, the feeling you have it's really nice the the pro is also that hasselblad uh, adapt themselves to digital uh, in a great way colors are stunning really good colors so i must say uh, this is a big plus in favor and also the optical quality i mean uh, whether it's the old lenses or these new lenses uh, the image quality is uh, really good okay so i must say that's nice well uh what's against well many people complain that this is slow to use for me this is not really a problem because actually uh, when you use a 500 series Hasselblad you go slow anyway so I think someone who needs something who wants something like this is not uh, searching for something to go really fast in a hurry it takes maybe time to switch on but times to uh, the focus the auto focus on this one is slow okay uh, but you can always uh, fine-tune in manual if you want if you use it on the classic uh, 500 obviously it's slow but uh, well it was slow anyway before okay but if we compare it this is uh, still slow okay for me that's not a, that's not really a problem a plus is you have an autofocus that uh, you can sometimes fine-tune manually but before you don't have any autofocus I think it is a plus this is not a phase detection for autofocus is a contrast detection so it's not that fast but i think that's okay another point is that for me um the 500 series is the square format so uh people who like square they don't find the square here but still you can uh, ask the sensor about the, the the camera back to crop to square okay and uh, although you crop to square, you get the square one, it keeps the, the rectangular one. And that's in case you want it fully. But the problem really is not uh, down to square. It's the fact is that if you look at the sensor, it's rectangular, but it's uh, horizontal. So it means if you're a person who want to do horizontal, that's fine. If you want to do square, you can crop and you still have 39 megapixels, not 50, okay? But the problem if you want to do vertical pictures because this one okay in vertical yeah you can use it in vertical okay that's fine if you want fully otherwise you can crop vertical but then you lose a lot of resolution okay but if you want to use it vertical you could but if you want to use the screen on the side then that's not really practical because uh, the idea is not this it's waist level so that's not too good okay 
and if you want to use it on the classical uh, 500 here obviously this is uh, not thought for uh, vert for a vertical this is square but it will be placed will be horizontal if i want to make a picture vertically how do i look i look here in my uh, in the viewfinder that's a practical so you would need a prism viewfinder and that will be horizontal with no angle i got one but i've got an angle so that means i would look like this to look straight so that's not feasible honestly so for me if i uh, use this uh, back on my uh, on my 500 i do i would do square fi uh, pictures only probably okay and second the six by six size of the film here is larger than the size of the sensor so i mean if i use the sensor my 80 millimeters here which is equivalent of 50 millimeters on full frame here it would be the equivalent of something 63 so it means uh here 63 or 60 or something like this okay it means in my viewfinder what i see here is actually larger than the picture i'm making so you need to have some marks uh, in there to know exactly where to frame so for that uh, in the first version of uh, the the digital back Hasselblad was giving uh, or selling or whatever they call it a different uh, ground glass for focusing okay now they don't give that anymore but uh, you have uh, some uh, marks uh, kind of paper i think i didn't check in the box if it's in there but i read that otherwise you could get uh, some kind of a thin plastic or a special uh, I don't know you call it paper like a uh, really I don't know you call it like see-through but it's not transparent okay paper with a mark so you know exactly where your framing is being done okay so for me that could be maybe a problem for not for me for many people who want to shoot vertically that would not be practical whether the, this one or the uh, digital fully digital so I think in case someone want this uh, sensor and the uh, Hasselblad colors and uh, all the big uh, advantage of uh, this camera they could get uh, the X1D, which is different, and you can use it uh, orienting all this. If you want Hasselblad, you could get the GFX or Fujifilm also. But I think the one, who, the person who wants to do a lot of vertical picture is better off with another camera than this one. Okay, but it can be the same sensor, same system, uh, same system, same uh, quality. If they use the One XD Mark II, okay, or X1D Mark II, I, I always mix up the, the the name. Okay, and something else that is important is that focusing with uh, a digital back is needs really a lot of pre precision okay so this is really precise okay but in digital in sorry in analog photography in field photography it forgives a lot more so many people when they put a digital back on here they don't get really precise focusing and it's not always really sharp because of that so it's really important that your camera is really well on the spot for focusing uh, sometimes you need to uh, get the ground glass to be adjusted to be to have really really precise uh, focusing another uh, pro and con is that uh, this is well the plus is that you can put the ISO a lot higher than the film okay You're up to 25,600 uh, ISO okay so that's okay and uh, the problem is that this is still really uh, uh, sensitive to uh, to uh, movement it means if the camera if the guy uh, if the it means if the photographer is moving it will be really sensitive especially because you have 50 megapixels so the more resolution you have the more sensitive it is okay but but compared to uh, the uh, classic one this is a mirrorless camera you don't have any uh, mirror in there so you don't get so much problem with uh, mirror vibration when actually in the original 500 uh, the mirror is massive and it vibrates and it does affect the picture so you lose on one side but this one in this way it's a bit better because you can put higher high so you don't have to drop so much of speed and also very important that the fact that there's no mirror it helps a bit okay but that this is something you need to take into account probably you will need the tripo tripod uh, quite a bit actually there's a tripod screw just right here something else when I use uh, here I've got the back on this camera if I uh, open my uh, viewfinder I must not forget that it is uh, inverted it goes left right right left okay so it's a bit hard for people to focus and frame with that okay obviously you can put a prism finder uh, I don't uh, have it here I've got one and then you don't have the inversion okay but take into account that if you use this back on the 907 then you don't have this inversion problem you see directly on the screen and no inversion so 
uh, it's something you need to know if you've never used that and you don't want to spend extra money on a viewfinder here uh, maybe you're better off using the 907 just there if you don't get uh, used to this inversion okay but for me that's not a problem because i'm used to that but take into account that if your idea is to get a 500 series uh, uh, Assemblad camera and mount uh, the back on this you will have this problem if you don't have a prism second here as I said before you have many options of uh, uh, framing okay like here you go here on frame you have uh, no cut uh, 645 one one which is square six 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 seven four seven uh, letter a four three two which is uh, like a six nine a recut 332 it's like uh, 35 minutes 24 by 36 uh, 6 uh, 69 all this you have many many options okay but take into account that if you use that uh, on the 907 fully digital okay that's no problem but if you actually use this on uh, this camera on a body like this you really need to have the mark on the on the ground glass otherwise you, it's really hard to frame because you don't know exactly where it cuts where it stops where it starts so take it into account that uh, you uh, will need to get uh, some serious marks if you want to change a uh, format okay but just you need to know that but i had to say it so that's it so my conclusion well is it a camera i would recommend or no uh well it depends it is really important that you analyze uh, what you do, what you would do with it, and understand the limits, whether you use it this way or on uh, a body like this, okay? Why? Explaining about vertical photography, all these things like this, but it's also a slow way of using it. This is not the camera you would uh, bring to uh, your uh, kids' uh, football game, for example, to use it to make pictures. You would use something else. So it's really to understand that if you like to do only vertical picture, that's not really for you because you're not going to use it full time or you're not uh, this way turned or you're not going to use it with a crop, vertical crop all the time. That's logical, okay? So then that would not be for you. If you're going to use mainly horizontal or square, for me, that's fantastic, okay? Second, understand that it's a slow way to use, a slow process. So if you love the way you were using a film camera, a Hasselblad film camera, you will probably love it. If you're always in a rush, that's not the camera for you, okay? So it's important that you really see uh, what the, not just a limit, because that could sound, uh, for people who say it's really limited, it's limited because you want to do anything with it. But if you understand the philosophy, it's not limited because within the philosophy is fantastic. Uh, some portrait photographer, they just love to shoot wa at waist level. So this is ideal because uh, I can shoot like this here. And you see my face i speak to you while i made the picture and in this way this is uh, fantastic so it really depends on the kind of picture you make okay and uh, it's important you analyze uh, what you need and what you want to do with it and second uh, would i have this camera as my only camera well it depends what you do but probably no because uh, there are many situations when you need to be more in a rush do things faster all this and this is not the camera we would recommend for that. If you want medium format, there are more options like uh, Fujifilm uh, GFX or uh, other Hasselblad, the X1D or X1D Mark II, okay? That would be okay. But if you want to have this and to be compatible with a film camera, a film Hasselblad, I think this is simply fantastic. I really love it personally. But I understand it is not for everyone, okay? And if you uh, never used a 500 camera, the way you hold it, all this, I do recommend you uh, check and see how it works, uh, if you like it, how it feels, all this, uh, to shoot at waist level, all this. I, I think that would be recommendable. You really uh, get to know better that kind of system, whether it's for you or not. By the way, you can actually uh, have a, an optional handle grip here and also a viewfinder, excellent viewfinder. Okay, so, so some people may be interested by that because it gives the possibility to uh, use not just the screen on the back, but a, more, a, a bit more, then it's, it's a bit more clumsy. I think it's nicer this way, okay? But this option exists, okay? So I think, yes, it is completely recommendable if you are really aware of what it is for and not to buy it just to say, 
well, I've got a Hasselblad, this is the best camera I could buy, and this and that, all this, huh? and then I'm going to do uh, my uh, Christmas party, and well, the, the picture is not good for that, okay? So it's really important you're aware of this. But once you're aware of this, and this is what you like, I guarantee you will enjoy it. This is fantastic, fantastic. If you love this easy way or peasy way of making picture, this is wonderful, honestly. I really loved it, and I really felt really similar of using my uh, Asoblad film camera. I really love that, okay? Whether it's not square, that could be a problem for some people. Whether it's uh, mainly horizontal, that could be a problem for some people. And uh, basically that's it. But honestly, completely recommendable. So thank you very much, my uh, subscriber. I want to stay anonymous uh, for lending me the camera. Uh, I'm presenting another camera of his soon, okay? And other great camera. And uh, thank you to you for watching the video. If you feel it may interest other people, please share it on social networks. If you have not done it yet, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Small button down here, so small bell. If you click on it, you get notified when I upload a new video. My website, erichibo.com. If you have any questions, you can leave a comment below. I also leave you links of my gear on Amazon, links to everything I've reviewed by KF Concept and Sendmark, and also a link to my PayPal account in case you wanted to make a donation. Thank you very much. Please take care of yourself and see you soon. Bye.